Hi guys, my name's Seb Tudor, I'm the man on the Silver Mountain and welcome back. Now today, it is far too warm, it's 30 degrees in the shade today, I'm literally melting, but what better day, what better day could there possibly be to discuss scantily clad women? I mean, they're already out in force on the street, thanks to the, the momentary good weather that we're having here at the moment, and I use good in the most subjective way possible because this is hell for me, but... This article came out last week, and I realise that lots of other people have covered it to one extent or another, but considering the... the <laughs> I have a, a, a vested interest in, in gaming and the way that it, it works, because it's such a big hobby for me, it's, such a th it's a thing that I can throw so many different aspects of my interests into and come out the other side, um, and also the, the kind of art artistic element of it, and the fact that it's one of the main ways that, thanks to, to distance, I'm able to kind of bond and, and enjoy time with my girlfriend, who is a, a gamer herself. You know, we've, we've, we've got these articles coming out, which seem to be a completely new spin on the old story. Now, the old story, if you don't know, has been attacked, thrown at all kinds of new media for time immemorial. Yeah, Tom and Jerry cartoons are causing violence in children, proven that it isn't. Car uh, uh, comic books are there to, to get your children to raise the devil. Well, no, they're not. That's nonsense. Um, uh, video games cause huge amounts of, of violence, which is one that is only just starting to die out as a myth now. And now you've got this, where... Video games with porn-type heroines are harming children, say, body image experts. Which, by the way, if we go through this in a minute, we'll find out that these body image experts are apparently just people who claim to be body image experts. There's no information here. There's no data. It's all anecdotal. It's all nonsense. But the more important thing is that video games, like movies and alcohol and tobacco and all manner of other things, you know, the the... I have worked with several of these things in the past as well, so I, I know the ins and outs to a degree. Um, they are all controlled products in most places. And so as you can see across the top of the screen here, I've got, I've pulled up all of the age ratings for the the, uh, the characters or the, the games with the characters that they are showing in this article. And so we're going to go through it and we're going to go, okay, so is this controlled product actually available to children, in which case it can harm them? Or... Is it not available to them? And so the people who are making these complaints are just morons. Furthermore, we'll go and talk about a couple of other things, again, in regards to um, the the kind of perceptions of that, that people have around this and some other stuff as well. But let's get into it. So first off, we've got this one straight up at the top. We've got um, one of the, the characters from Dead or Alive 3 Extreme. Obviously, Dead or Alive has its, its kind of beach volleyball spin-off. Um... And it's it's there for a reason, sure. It's it's a game that they made to capitalise on the fact that lots of people like their female characters. But also at the same time, yeah, is it something that some guys will play literally, you know, get hold of literally just to watch the the jiggly animated ladies jump up and down and play whatever mini game that you're playing in it? Yeah, probably. But guess what? I've known I, I've known at least a good number of, of women that found that game incredibly enjoyable because it wasn't intensive, it wasn't as combative and competitive as as um, the 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 main fighting game franchise. You know, people want different things from different games, and you can't just say, "Oh, this is this is purely for this demographic." Maybe it's it's in large part for that demographic, but it's not exclusive. It's available for anyone to purchase. But anyway, the important thing that we're getting to here, though, regardless, is first off, the thing that, that bugs me about everything that we're going to see in this article, by the way, is that this person is wearing about as much as you would see people wearing on the beach that I have seen walking down the road this morning in the 30-some degree heat, you know. And so... As a, and 30 degrees centigrade, by the way, for those who, who work in Fahrenheit. I'm not suggesting that it's actually kind of kind of cold. But anyway, the, 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 the 
the fact of the, the matter is, are you are the people complaining about this really not allowing their children outside? Are they really not allowing them to the, go to the beach or to walk up the high street if there is someone who has decided to take advantage of the warm weather and strip down to be comfortable? Oh, trust me, if it wasn't for the fact that I was recording this morning, I wouldn't be wearing a damn thing! Which is an image that all of you will now have to live with for the rest of your lives. But, moving back to the point at hand, let's take a look here. What have we got? Um, Dead or Alive Wiki says here that the age rating is, what, 18? Yeah, it says here that the age rating is 18, in which case it's an adult restri is a restricted f uh, product purely intended for adults, right? That's, that's what it is. That's what it means. And so as a result, that can't be harming children unless some negligent adult is actively taking it and giving it to them. In which case, strike that one off the list. That can't be used as an example because it is, it is literally illegal to sell this to a child. Moving on. Okay, let's have a look at a little bit of a, a look at this text first before we move on to the other characters and the other games here. So, porn influenced heroines in video games with impossibly big breasts and unreal bodies are harming a generation of Australian children. Okay, so firstly, this is the Australian Puritanical Committee, apparently. Um, but what it comes down to is impossibly big breasts? Really? Those don't, I mean, they might seem a little unnaturally round to an extent, but uh, to, to me. But then again, also, so what? It's an animated character. A small child would be able to tell the difference between this character and a real person. Because this looks like a Saturday morning cartoon, and a real person looks like a real person. But, but then, you know, firstly, impossibly big breasts. I don't think so. I have known girls with very large breasts. I've known men with breasts bigger than that, to be fair. And so as a result, I don't think that that's necessarily a, a, a thing. You can't say that they're also porn influenced because you, unless you are literally going to the creator and going, who was this influenced by? For example, the creator of Bayonetta, standout female character who has had an awful lot of flack for the fact that she is a strong female character who is very, very uh, open with her sexuality and and uh, confident with it as well was created by a female was created by a woman and as a result if you went to her and asked her what her inspirations for it were I'm sure that you probably wouldn't find porn in there it was just that she felt felt it was a cool design or it was a thing that she had grown up with in in manga or anime or something like that and as a result it all just came together as this character for her to use for this game but anyway, moving on, the stark warning comes from concerned body image experts who are uh, who warn the who warn the increasingly graphic sexual poses and depictions of women in mainstream video games fuel harmful stereotypes and body dysmorphia. By this logic, you could also again argue for the male equivalent because all of the people in these games are are, are, are very obviously caricature or, or very obviously exaggerated in some way. You know, I mean, with the fighting games that this seems to mostly revolve around, they are deliberately and incredibly exaggerated beyond all extremes. Have you seen the moves that they pull off? How much airtime they get? You can't stay in the air that long by yourself just by jumping or by kicking or whatever else. You've got people in fucking Street Fighter that throw fireballs for God's sake. You know, it, it, how many times do you see like, I don't know, let's, let's go to the Tekken series. How many times do you see a bear taking part in a mixed martial arts tournament the lead and, and and people with demon wings and cyborg arms and all these kind of things. It's 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 a ridiculousness. It's literally a kid's cartoon in terms of style, but they have still taken account of these things. But anyway, let's continue going. Um, because well, in fact, by this standard, you could say if we're ju if we're judging Saturday morning cartoon kind of appearance stuff as being able to influence children to suggest that the oh, it's going to cause body dysmorphia or whatever else, then look at people like, like I don't know if He-Man's still around anymore. I think there was a new series. But He-Man, again, is all, always the one that's brought up because he's literally like a triangular body of muscle and so on and so forth. Look at a whole load of these other characters from from shows kind of across the entire spectrum. 
by this logic, you could say that Tom and Tom and Jerry, or any other anthropomorphized kind of animal char cartoon character, could generate kind of species dysmorphia. Yeah, and I realise that that's stretching and that's a bit ridiculous. But then again, so is this because kids are not this thick. They are able to tell what is real and what is not. Because let's face it, how many of you guys have sat down and watched a cartoon? Yeah, I would imagine the majority of you. Yeah. At any point when you were sat down in front of, oh, I don't know, Captain Planet, if you're from my generation, or one of the more one of the Marvel TV shows from from later generations, or the Batman the animated series. Yeah. How many of you guys confuse that for real life? I can imagine very, very few of you, if any of you at all. But anyway, among the toxically augmented characters is uh, in highly suggestive outfits that have burst onto video game screens are Rainbow Mika and Laura Matsuda from Street Fighter V and Hanoka from the Dead or Alive franchise. Well, yeah, well, we've already addressed Dead or Alive. Dead or Alive isn't a kid's product. In no way is it a kid's product. It's illegal to sell it to a child, in which case that's discounted you we can ignore that but we do have laura matsuda here who to to her credit for a completely cg animated woman is not unattractive and has assets that are ample to say the least but is it a kid's product let's take a look age rating ah okay so we've got a 12 12 a rating yeah under under peggy for the uk and europe so 12 a okay in which case do you know what that means parents that means that you can take a look at this character and you can go, if my child is men mentally so kind of there enough to tell the difference between a cartoon and real life and cartoon violence and real life violence, then yeah, guess what? I can choose to give it to them. They're not going to be able to buy it by themselves. And a 12 year old is probably moving away from cartoons and things anyway, in which case they are probably more than aware enough to know what is and isn't real. And if your child doesn't know that, then that's also kind of your fault as their parent. So let's look at this again. We've got this very, very well endowed character here, but she's from a game franchise that literally turns around to you as a parent and says, if your child is below the age of 12, but you're you you want to get this for them then that's kind of your choice but otherwise they should not be this game cannot be sold like over the counter cannot be given to a child by a sales rep by a cash uh, uh, a cashier unless they are 12 or above and now this often causes all manner of sticky situations because when i was working um in a in a cinema and uh, in management then yeah you'd have people trying to claim that they were whatever age and it became tough especially when 12 year olds don't tend to carry any form of id you know it becomes a tough thing to kind of handle yeah the, to to make sure that you're not going to get screwed over on licensing and so here though again it comes down to checking on the part of the cashier but on the part of the parent you're their parent. If they have this game in your house playing it and they are under the age of like of, of the certificate for this game, then that's on you. That's it. But anyway, let's move on because we've got more to cover, including some classic games here. But uh, even when women are depicted as kicking ass, they have to be hot doing it. Youth and women's advocate Melinda Tankard Reist said. OK, so here's here's the issue that I have. So he, she's a youth and women's advocate. We've had a body image expert from from somewhere, yeah, and that's 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 it. Random random suggested body image experts, but the thing is, yeah, of course they they. I mean, have you seen female bodybuilders? Yeah, and I'm not talking about the ones that go overboard, who are really bulked up, but I'm talking about the ones that specifically go out and train. Yeah, they don't they don't care about necessarily showing off the, the the big muscles and entering contests or anything like that but they are doing it for their own health they are doing it to kick ass i mean have you seen mma female mma fighters you know ronda rousey and the like 
you know, they aren't unattractive people because they have to keep themselves incredibly fit. Yeah. Um, and so is it is it really that surprising? Well, no, it's not surprising. When they are kicking ass, they're probably quite healthy, quite physically fit. And so, yeah, that's attractive to people. In which case, in an exaggerated game like, I don't know, Street Fighter, take a physically fit female and exaggerate her. Yeah, guess what? She becomes this. And so there's no, you know, that's that's just a very straightforward thing. The same way that you take a very physically fit I don't know, actor, or a boxer, or an MMA fighter, and you exaggerate them, and guess what? You get half the fucking cast of, of these games anyway. You get all the Street Fighter characters who have muscles on muscles, you know, and, and there it is. And so th this, this statement is just ridiculous, because if they are kicking ass, especially in this context, then chances are that they had to get to a... a physical point to be able to because otherwise you know they're not going to to stand to compete but attention is drawn to her sexual characteristics with tight clothing emphasizing large surgically enhanced breasts it is almost assumed that boys wouldn't want to play a game without sexy women in yeah but if you made a game that was entirely without women in then either it would go unnoticed as with a lot of sports games that don't have women in or you would complain about the fact that women aren't being represented in it. You can't have it both ways. Yeah? In which case, there are games that are entirely female cast. Um, Skullgirls, for instance, which is an incredibly cartoony, entirely female cast. And guess what? Oh, excuse me. And guess what? That game has a following. People enjoy that game. Not necessarily purely because of the fact that it's an all-female cast, considering it's so cartoony that a lot of the time... That doesn't really matter. But what it comes down to is, it's a good game. If it's a good game, people want to play it. The rest of it is, is kind of immaterial. But also, surgically enhanced breasts? No. Exaggerated? Maybe. How can you do that in real life? Through surgery, sure. But in a game, that's it's, it's just the style of the game. The way it's being represented. Because a lot of these games also that they are mentioning here do not have a realistic element to the way that their characters look, bar one game which we'll get onto in a second. But again, the drawing of attention to her her sexual characteristics with tight clothing and so on, have, again, have you seen female MMA fighters where they are wearing, like, shorts and, like, a sports bra, essentially? Yeah? They're not wearing an awful lot. Their physical characteristics are basically all that is covered. And in some of these characters, you have clothing that is far more covering, as we'll see when we get further down, there's more, it's so much more covering than, than what you actually see in real life female fighters. But anyway, we don't see strong women depicted, depicted without being sexualized first. Uh, again, uh, I disagree if you're if you're purely just exaggerating the 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 real situation into something cartoony then yeah things are just going to expand i mean there are pictures of of captain america with like a, a chest that looks like he's been expanded forward with muscle and nothing else by like a foot and a half you know is that realistic no is it focusing on something that that is perceived as desirable you know being muscular fit yeah, in which case, eh? But anyway, according to Sydney psychologist Sarah McMahon, aha, uh -huh, here we go, uh, a, a final supposed expert, um, director of Body Matters, these images set up impossible expectations. Well, yeah, because you're not a computer game character. Again, kids can tell the difference between real and not. Yeah, it's only through indoctrination in actuality that kids don't have a good grasp on what's real or not. Because as much as kids ha may have that grasp of reality versus fiction, and they have that that expansive imagination that many people lose as they grow older, like they they have that, and it it takes religious indoctrination or education because due to their their lack of information and their naivety. 
to actually crush their imagination, to to blur the lines between real and fake, as with believing in fictitious gods, and and so on and so forth. You know, you you're if if these ex if these impossible expectations are being developed, it's because you are telling them that they are being developed. And that's where the problems start. You're, you're informing this more than the games that you're complaining about are. But anyway, moving on, we've got Lara Croft, who, to be fair, again, I have seen people wearing less, women wearing less, walking down the street this morning in the sunshine than she is wearing now. Yeah? Again, if you take your child to a beach during the summer, or if you live in a warm climate even... Chances are, people are wearing less than this already. But, this is, as said, a restricted product. It's a computer game. In which case, we will go and check to see what the age rating is. In the UK, 16. M in New Zealand. 16 in Germany. M in Australia. Okay, so, so if this is happening in Australia, then guess what? It's already a restricted product. Kids can't get hold of it. In the UK, 16 is essentially become the, the beginning of, of you being your own guardian. Yeah, it's the beginning of you like legally begin, like taking on the first few responsibilities and things as an adult. And so as a result, you're, you know, having it at this, this price, it still means that you, if you're, you know, you're, you're below this age, you can't get hold of it. And by the age of 16, where you're able to enter the workforce, where you're able to, especially well, within many, many countries, including the UK, you're able to start taking control of your life in regards to sex and relationships. You know, you've got an awful lot more there that, that, that just stands out as suggesting that you'd be able to tell the difference between real and fake. But hey ho, moving on. Who else have we got? Nina Williams, who is actually wearing something that's quite covering arms covered body covered long dress yeah she's got a slit in the side so that she can she can produce a parent is that a gas grenade and a well i know that's a pistol but whatever kind of grenade that is um you know and it's saying that the pose is unrealistic i don't know i've seen people turn to the side and put their hands on their hips again though it's an it's a maybe slightly more re realistic artistic style than this one up here but she's She's, it's still an exaggerated game. Tekken 7, or Tekken generally, bears fighting in ma mixed martial arts tournaments. Um, people using magic and and <laughs> being mem being uh, cyborgs and all kinds of other things that are just completely ri ridiculous. Heihashi punching people with lightning. You know, in which case, yeah, okay, it might not be the most comfortable or realistic pose to generally pull at the beginning of a mixed martial arts fight. But guess what? It's a fighting game. It's a fantasy. It's not real. A kid would still be able to look at that and tell you that that's not a real person. Yeah? They'd be able to identify it as a woman, probably. Uh, but they probably wouldn't be able to, you know, say much more than that without you telling them. And that's where it comes down to it. They would be able to go... It's it's a lady, and you could probably say it, it, they probably say it's not real. It's like a cartoon. It's like a show on TV, especially considering more and more shows over the last what decade or so have have integrated more kind of CG stuff into their cartoons and things. You know, they they they're going to be more acclimatized to this than you think. But yeah, Tekken Seven's age rating. Where are we looking? So it's T for teen in the states. What do we got in the UK? Peggy rating for it. 16. Yeah, again, restricted product. Unless you're on the verge of basically being an adult, then you can't have access to this game. If you're giving them access to this game, which, let's face it, there are more than enough 12-year-olds playing all manner of games that they shouldn't be by law, you know, with, with it, they've... That's on the parents. You know, it's hard to police this stuff when it's in your own home. You know, and uh, and so if you're complaining about it, then simply enough, don't buy it. Because your kid can't get it for themselves. But anyway, 
then we're back to, to Street Fighter V over here, which we've already addressed. And, oh, sorry, Halo, Halo 4. So we've got Cortana, who is fairly obviously not human and or not real. Firstly, you know, big glowing blue lady that's somewhat translucent. Fair enough, doesn't seem real. Age rating for it. Where are we? It was here a second ago. I looked it up. Peggy rating, age eight, age 16. So yeah, once again, we've got a, a kind of parentally controlled product that may very well be getting into the hands of kids that are apparently being harmed, especially young girls who might be getting harmed when, let's face it, these games aren't for kids. None of these games are for children. The only one that is, kind of, is Street Fighter V, which again, with... Uh, with this character here where they're going, oh, she's she's ridiculous. It's borderline farcical. Yeah, guess what? That's the fucking point. There's, there's literally, that is literally the reason behind the, the entire game. How often do you see, like, British kind of guards in the background there with the Busbies and whatever else playing the uh, marching band, rather, you know, how, how often do you see that in a mixed martial arts ring? You don't, quite frankly. And so why should you be taking any of the rest of this game more seriously than that? As I said, a kid would probably look at that and go, that's a cartoon. If they didn't know it was a video game. But hey-ho, let's, let's address this last bit at the end here then, these last two sections. So the, woman in the, the women in these games have impossibly big breasts, which again, they don't. Maybe more rarely occurring sizes of breasts, but they're not impossibly big. Uh, and they are not athletic. Well, she seems to have a fair amount of muscle. Like, she might not be, but she's a hologram. You can't really tell with her because she's covered up. She looks pretty athletic. Maybe not, maybe more kind of, you know, weekend gym bunny than than an actual like climber or bodybuilder would be and again you you deliberately kind of you know regardless of the size of of her thighs that seem quite defined to an extent you actively cover up the rest of her body here anyway just to emphasize what you want to emphasize and she seems pretty fit and healthy so again i don't see how how you can try and make that point um but she specialises in treating patients with eating disorders and body shame issues. Okay, fair enough. But again, is this a? Where's the where's the the objective information that she's producing? How many of her clients? How many of her patients have come to her going, "Oh, Street Fighter Five made me want to become super thin and made me and, and made me feel bad about my body." How how many? You know, give me give me a proper number without her, the ones that we can verify weren't suggested by her first. Yeah, how many people can can we say that? Because also, yeah, girls, young girls are playing games to almost the same level that the the young boys are now, because it is just another form of entertainment for the the younger generations from like my generation up down, um, or onward or whatever you want to say. And so as a result, you know, yeah, fine. You've got a greater amount of exposure, but the same way that Tom and Jerry didn't cause people to become more violent, comic comic books and, and Dungeons and Dragons didn't cause people to try rituals, excuse me, to, to summon Satan. Um, there is no correlation between uh, kind of real world violence and people playing video games. You know, the the with all of these things, you know, there's the, the, a nonsense. But it adds to a growing culture of self surveillancing where girls are watching and worrying about how they look. Yeah, but they always have. And so have guys, by the way. And so I want, I want to know how many people that she deals with that she's treating patients with eating disorders and body shame issues. How many of those are men? Yeah, that, that's another thing that I want to see here because how is, this, how is it that this is focused on women? Yeah? Because these characters are unrealistic for both sexes. Throughout the entire like genre of fighting games, throughout almost every single um, game that has any kind of exaggerated, non-real world bent on it, then you have these exaggerated characters for both men and women. It's even treatment. 
within these games for the most part. Um, and so, you know, where, where are the guys um, in this? Because surely you should be talking about the whole thing instead of focusing in what, only in one direction. Um, but again, you know, these people, these girls may very well be observing themselves more regularly, um, you know, watching themselves and worrying about how they look. But then again, also, are they going to are they likely to be comparing themselves to a literal cartoon character that they know is a cartoon character because they have to put the disc in the drive and they have to press start and they know what it is? Yeah, their perception of it being unrealistic becomes part and parcel with the way that they are experiencing the content. Yeah, for instance, the games that I play, I talk about learning from gaming. Yeah, because it is a very interactive media and it allows for that kind of development. It allows for that kind of growth. But I, regardless of the fact that I built a huge tower in Age of Conan, that doesn't, uh, not Age of Conan, Conan Exiles, that doesn't mean that then I'm going to think that I can do the same in real life and go and try it. Because I will fuck myself up. I will probably get crushed by bricks that I have inexpertly cut. You know, there, there, there are, are things to learn from gaming, sure. Yeah? But they have to come in context and they have to come from you also realizing that the game is a means by means by which to experience some other stuff but it's still not real yeah there are some people a very limited number of people that cannot make that distinction but for the most part this isn't the issue that you're seeing you've got a huge number of other factors advertising with with real models the, the fashion industry focusing on the incredibly skinny instead of those who have uh, more robust figures. And I'm not necessarily saying even healthily, uh, unhealthily uh, robust figures. I'm talking about people who are healthy and yet still have meat on their bones. You know, uh, uh, the, the study again surfaced the other day saying that the curvy Kelly Brook has literally the... the uh, kind of perfect dimensions for, for attractive attraction and attractiveness so says science yeah and so as a result if that's the 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 actual ideal for attractiveness and this is where a lot of these worries come from yeah being attractive being desirable fitting in not being mocked you know it's it's a thing that gets to everybody but again there are much much bigger issues and and people involved here than just blaming video games when you've got entire industries that are making their money off the suffering of these people who who are, are literally beating themselves up over the fact that their body is shaped slightly differently from someone else. As someone who used to be incredibly fat and is still not particularly fit again at the moment, considering I've got I went from being very active to, to much more sedentary, you know, yeah, it it, it hits you hard. Yeah, when you realize that your body throughout the entirety of your life is going to grow and shrink and react to how you deal with the world around you, yeah, that that kind of sucks. But at the same time, what makes me feel worse? Yeah, me seeing a representation of a male character in a video game who is, you know, buff and tall and strong and powerful and whatever else in ways that I can never hope to be. Or turning around and seeing women that I care for, or women whose opinions I, you know, very much um, kind of believe in and rely on, uh, to one degree or another, turning around and complimenting some male model who has not only been airbrushed but also has no other like job or, or action in life other than to keep his body in that in the state that it is in the image that they've seen. Yeah. The unrealistic expectations go in a lot of different ways and I have not I have not met that many guys who would turn, who who would ultimately hands down turn round and go that girl if I liked her but she didn't fit into I don't know this physical archetype um you know then I wouldn't go out with her. Guys are, are Far less shallow on the appearances side of things than they get given credit for in a lot of ways. 
yeah? Especially when it matters. Are there people who are assholes? Yes. Are there people who are misguided? Yes. But then you come to this kind of stuff and it's like, are they all being treated evenly in the way that they are represented? Yes, because they're not representing real people. They're representing cartoon caricature characters that have been built from the ground up with their own histories, stories, the universe that they're living in, and it's all ridiculous. And so why are we getting so upset about it? You know, it, it's it's you're, you're putting too much emphasis on one thing when that, that has no real push on it, no real say on it. It treats everyone equally to one degree or another, you know, and yet you're making you're making this standout issue of it instead of going well actually there are a lot more things involved like the representation of them in clothing fashion the things that they wear yeah um the the sizing of clothing as well where i mean i'm a i'm a tall guy and i've got a very rectangular body shape and as a result i tend to have trouble finding like decent length trousers that don't when I sit down just instantly pull up so I've I've shown off way too much ankle you know I'm British it's it has to be much much more conservative amounts of ankle even on a dude you know and so it, it it's the 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 way that clothing is made the way that the 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 clothing and other kind of fashion and cosmetic items are sold all of these things have a much much greater impact because they're using real people to sell the product real people that can be compared against not cartoon characters but anyway the salvation army research shows only 16 percent of australian girls are happy with their body and weight and the Butterfly Foundation spokeswoman Sarah Spence said the depiction of women in video games was becoming more graphic and negatively affecting boys as well as girls. Okay, you're drawing a really odd correlation here, guys at the Daily Ter Telegraph in Sydney. Um, I believe it's Sydney that this article came from. Um, you're saying that 16% of Australian girls are... Uh, or only 16% of Australian girls are happy with their body and weight. Guess what? That's called being young, yeah? Where you, you care too much about everything, you care too much about what you look like, who you, who you hang around, what you sound like, what you do. You're worried about be being judged by everyone, by your parents, by your friends, by, by teachers, by everybody, yeah? As, as I've said in other videos, uh, there was a, a, a kind of a breakdown done, a study done, where it showed that kids these days are, I believe it's somewhere in the region of 55% more stressed in life than, or uh, it's, it's, I think it was 55%. But, but anyway, they're more stressed than asylum inmates from the 1940s and 1950s. Yeah, asylum inmates who have literally been locked away with mental conditions were less stressed than the youth of today. And so, uh, and yet then you have a different spokesperson coming in from a different angle saying that the video game, uh, the, the depictions of women in video games are becoming more graphic. Well, yeah, they're becoming more graphic for, for dudes as well. Yeah. I mean, you only need to look at trailers like the one for Death Stranding that I went through on this video where you've, you've got um, characters literally completely nude who happen to be male. Yeah. And, and like you've you've got uh, all the stuff that happened around Watch Dogs 2 where you had NPCs male NPCs walking around with their dicks out yeah you 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 you're getting this a lot more in all kinds of games but then again look at it you're also getting it in things like i don't know Game of Thrones where everything is becoming more graphic everything is becoming more obvious and exposed yeah, it's just the way we're going because we're becoming more accepting of it in various ways. And so we're experimenting. We're trying to find a way to bring it out. Um, and so, yeah, it is. The, but the, some of these some of these things are affecting both boys and girls. But you're not treating that evenly. And you're saying that it's affecting girls badly. And it's only the per these perceptions, these depictions that are damaging the boys kind of way of working. Yeah. But anyway, it's more than just an issue of body esteem and body image, uh, said Ms. Spence, whose organisation supports people affected by de eating disorders and negative body image. It's very much about over-sexualising women. But again, come on, let's take a look at this. How many of, of the people that have come to you have said 
that their eating disorders or their negative body image is created by the characters that we're talking about here or the games that we're talking about here. How old are these people? Yeah, there's not enough information given here to really back up what's being said, which is ridiculous. Uh, La Trobe University's senior research fellow, Dr. Liz Connor, said there was a wider issue culturally about unrealistic body images. Why is the fantasy of female action figures essentially soft porn? Well, I wouldn't say it is. I would say that if you take a look at a normal fit female fighter, of which there aren't many, by the way, but if you actually take a look at the ones who are prominent, as said, I gave the example of Ronda Rousey earlier, or, um, oh... There was the, the, the one who played Angel Dust in uh, in Deadpool, who used to be in MMA. Is it Gina Carrera? Something like that. Anyway, again, look at her. She's a curvy, fit, attractive woman, yeah? Who, at one point, was in that state, not because of acting, but because she was literally kicking the crap out of people, yeah? If you've seen Ronda Rousey fight, it, it, then, then again, she she is putting an awful lot of power into the things that she's doing, yeah. And yet, she's still attractive. She's still um, only one step away from from being these characters that you're talking about. Are you saying that what Ronda Rousey does as a career turns her basically into a soft core porn star? Because I have a feeling that that firstly it's inaccurate, and secondly, she might take issue with that, and she doesn't seem like the type of person to annoy you with that kind of thing. But, she goes, it's sexist and values their fuckability over everything else about them. Again, no it doesn't. It really doesn't. Because it does the same thing to guys. If that's the what, what you're saying here, then, oh, I don't know, pick a character from, the, from these, these various games who wanders around without a shirt on. A, a male character that wanders around without a shirt on. Yeah? I don't know. Fucking Ryu. He all he's wearing is a, a, a kind of gi, isn't it? White white thing around his top. Yeah, but you can still see his chest. You can still see how like his rippling muscles upon muscles. Yeah, and so as a or, or Ken even who is basically the same but with blonde hair. You know, and it's it it comes down to the fact that yeah they're they're wearing some clothing, but there are also other characters. The the I it's been so long since I played one of these fighting games I can't draw them to mind. But there are many all manner of these characters that, that get shown off more. Yeah? Like, in some cases, you have characters who are literally just walking around in basically a sumo nappy. Yeah? And it's like they're showing off an awful lot of their body. You know? And, and if you're arguing for maybe more diverse body types, fair enough. I wouldn't necessarily disagree with that. Because you do have male characters maybe with a little bit more in the way of body diversity but then again saying that also games have got better with this yeah and there's an uproar whenever the things get moved around or changed yeah may looking in overwatch with may looking thinner in some of her her artwork and some of her her skins more recently than the the curvy character that the people sort of kind of felt they saw before um well, guess what? No, she can. She is still curvy, but she's wearing a different costume. It's it's pulling in in different places. It's it's the way it, the clothing works, right? You've all you you all know what clothing is, yeah. I mean, it might be a prison to some, and I would in this temperature kind of agree. But at the same time, it's it's the way that clothing works. It changes your outward appearance. It pulls in in places and lets things out in others. But again, this this is bizarre considering that. Again, kids can tell the difference between rea real, the, the real world and a fake cartoon world, yeah? Firstly. But secondly, every single one of these examples, every single one of these things is not for children. They are for people who should be able to know what is real and what isn't real. Make that split and judge accordingly. If you are saying the the a... If these people are genuinely coming to you and saying... Oh, I saw this cartoon character and this cartoony character and it made me hate myself. Yeah? Chances are they hated themselves already. They were already worried about their their physical state. And the character is just what they are blaming. You are looking f 
far, far out in regards to the, the place to address this because all you're doing is allowing them more excuses. Yeah? And far be it for me to say that these issues are unimportant because they are very important, but they're important for everybody. Yeah? And and it's it's far more important to address how people see a real body than like artistic interpretations of them, censoring art, complaining about it, saying that they're harming young people when they're not even for those young people. But anyway, guys, that, uh, maybe this was a little bit of a rant. Maybe it was a bit warm for me to to uh, kind of get right into this straight off the bat. But, um, you know, let me know what you guys think. What, what do you guys think about this whole thing? You know, um, in regards to body image, as said, I had my own issues with it. I still have my own issues with it, considering that I have become less fit over the last couple of years. You know, um, so it's it's one of these things that you got to grapple with. But again, it, this this kind of thing affected me so, so much more when I was a kid than now that I'm an adult, because now that I'm an adult, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, and the things that bugged me, as said, when I was when I was actually fat, wasn't some l deliberately and obviously unrealistic kind of interpretation and representation of a, of, a, of a human body or a guy's body. It was when people came up to me at school and bullied me about being bigger than them. Yeah, or it was me not being fit enough to go and do things with my friends. Or it was girls not finding me at all attractive, regardless of the fact that they didn't know who the fuck I was. Yeah? Purely, and they didn't even care to get to know me, purely based on the fact that I looked the way I did. Yeah? That was a, that was a, a, a much, much larger, larger set of issues that kind of played into my, my negative body image and my negative kind of perception of myself. And, of course, the more negative you are about yourself, the more you slip into that, the harder it is to get out, yeah? You are not going to help anybody in the world lose weight by telling them they are fat, yeah? Or that no one will like them if they if they stay fat. Because they will get miserable, they will, they will comfort eat, they will not be motivated to go and exercise, they won't do any of those things, yeah? Just, just by being stressed, your body goes into kind of panic mode and will potentially try to store energy for when you need to run the fuck away and survive by yourself. Rather unsurprisingly, that entails putting weight on. You know, the way to, to lose weight, the way to, to deal with, with uh, these body issues, the way to potentially deal with some of these eating disorders tends very much to be to deal with reality and manage it. Yeah? Yeah? And, and to to kind of stay in a happy, positive, calm place that allows you to work methodically and sensibly, not flying off the handle and creating scenarios like this where you're blaming all manner of things that cannot be connected in a large way, in a, in a representable way. Because again, if this, was, if this was a study that even had a, a tiny sample, like 2,000 respondents, yeah, who were saying, yes, my negative body image, yes, my my eating disorder is all down to Street Fighter V, yeah? Then at least that would be something, but there's none of that. We've got three supposed experts making claims that they can't back up. On products, by the way, again, that are completely restricted and removed from young people's access, unless an adult gives it to them, again, which is essentially against the law. But anyway, as said, let me know what you guys think. Um, I'm, I'm interested to know, again, if there are any of you out there who have had eating disorders, who have had these problems, who have had the, the kind of body dysmorphia and the, the anxiety surrounding body image, and you've had a different experience to me, or, or maybe you've, you've had a very similar experience to me, but either way, you know, what, what, what do with this? You know, where, where, where do you lie on this? Are you agreeing with these people saying that yes, it's terrible, or are you saying that that there are there were bigger real world concerns? Yeah, I know people who hide in video games because it's an escape from reality. 
And I've known people to do that in regards to their sexuality, in regards to um, their, their gender dysmorphia, in regards to the, the kind of the, the, the things that are happening at home between parents. You know, it's interesting the number of people that you come across online who are there hiding in a virtual space to get away from things in real life. It's far, it seems to be, to me, uh, uh, a thing that can be used to help as much as it can to hinder in various ways, but just purely on, oh, these pictures are very obviously unrealistic and, and cartoony characters make me feel bad. Okay, fine, then how about we take a look at the real culprit, if this is genuinely what you're saying, and we look at Jessica Rabbit and fucking Betty Boop, yeah? The original kind of cartoon supermodel plus kind of characters from god knows how long ago the ones that started all this stuff off go and take a look at them first yeah and if you if you if you say that that's a ridiculous idea then guess what so is this anyway thank you very much for watching guys and i'll see you in the video tomorrow take care thank you very much for watching guys if you enjoyed this video then please drop us a like and subscribe for more and i'll see you in the video tomorrow take care